Bullion can be acquired in many different forms, from coins, rounds, bars, ingots, nuggets, common household items, and jewelry. Just about anything can be made entirely or partially of precious metals. This is part one of a two-part series. In this video, we're going to look at the technique of testing and verifying the purity of gold, and in part two, we'll discuss testing and verifying the purity of silver. So stick around and check it out. If you enjoy this content and want to see more, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. As precious metal stackers, we primarily deal with coins, rounds, medallions, and bars. Many community members pour custom silver pieces that we enjoy collecting, but usually all of these forms of bullion come with a very clear marking which designate their content, purity, and weight. With these markings and knowing that these precious metals products come from a reliable source, this is all we need to be assured that we have purchased the real deal. But what if you pick something up on eBay, at a flea market, or a yard sale, or from an unknown seller? Even if you buy cull or previously owned secondary market pieces from a reputable online dealer, you still have to be cautious. Most online dealers don't have the time to test every piece they receive. They will most likely do sample testing, and if they find a discrepancy, then they would test the entire lot. But this is why, as stackers, we should always be diligent about checking the precious metals pieces that we buy. This is one of the reasons why I include with each of my bullion reviews the diameter, thickness, and weight of each piece. If any of these measurements are not in order, it should raise a red flag that the piece may not be authentic. Further testing can be administered, such as a magnetism test or the ping sound test, or a thermal test. More complicated techniques can be used, but generally require more expensive equipment to carry them out. They include the water displacement mass test, the use of a portable electronic gold detector device, using an X-ray fluorescence testing device, the fire assay coupleation method, and the aqua regina test. Many of these more sophisticated testing techniques are much more accurate but involve expensive equipment or dangerous chemicals which can damage the piece being tested. One of the best testing techniques in my opinion is the touchstone testing method. This method is one of the oldest methods to officially test precious metals dating back to antiquity. It was first recorded by the Indus Valley Civilization circa 2600 to 1900 BC. It involves rubbing the precious metal against a touchstone and then administering an acid to reveal its purity. Although this technique is effective with any form of bullion, I use it primarily for testing jewelry pieces that I acquire as part of my precious metal stack. Most jewelry comes with what is called a hallmark, which will identify what the piece is made from and it is important to become familiar with the different hallmarks and what they represent as they can be a little complicated and confusing and they will differ from pieces made from different parts of the world. Because some vintage and custom jewelry pieces may not have any hallmarks, you need to also possess the ability to identify a quality made piece of jewelry by understanding and knowing the techniques and the materials used that give you a strong indicator that a piece is genuine. I will cover these topics later in another video. What I want to talk about here is specifically the touchstone testing method of determining the authenticity and purity of precious metals, specifically gold and silver. When testing gold with a touchstone method, you want to make sure that the metal you're testing is completely clean of all foreign debris, oils, grease, and anything that might compromise the testing process. You will need a small tablet of dark stone such as slate or lightite. 
Before each use, you want to ensure that the touchstone is thoroughly cleaned and free of any previous samples or leftover testing solutions. The way to accomplish this is to place it face down on a piece of 320 grit sandpaper on a flat surface and sand off any sample material. Then neutralize it in a bath of water and baking soda, rinse it off, and make sure that it is dry before its next use. Now let's talk about the testing solutions. Touchstone tests are accurate to roughly 15 parts per thousand and are based on the fact that 24 karat gold resists all but the strongest acids. The purer the gold, the stronger the acid required to dissolve it. Measured strengths of nitric acid solutions are used to test for 14 karat and lower purities. Aqua Regina which is a mixture of one part nitric acid and three parts hydrochloric acid is used to test higher carrot purity. A standard touchstone kit will usually come in a storage box. However, each item can be purchased separately. A kit will consist of one half ounce or 0.015 liter bottles of specific testing solutions for specific precious metals or specific purities of gold. You'll have a bottle for 10K, 14K, 18K, and 22K gold testing, and each of these bottles has a measured strength of nitric and usually muriatic acid. Just enough not to dissolve the purity of the gold it was meant to test. The higher the purity, the higher the concentration of acid in the bottle. A complete kit will also consist of a bottle for testing silver and platinum. Each kit usually contains a test stone for capturing your rub samples. This one is 2 inches by 2 inches, however larger touchstones are available. I place the date of purchase on each bottle so that I can be aware of the age of the solution, as acids will degrade due to thermal or light decomposition and might affect the accuracy of their readings. This is why it's important to keep your test kits in a temperature controlled environment and stored in a container that protects it from light. Here's how the test works. You rub the jewelry of an unknown carat purity gently back and forth on a testing stone to leave a thin but clearly visible metal sample. You want to be careful to select a location on your piece that won't be visible and you don't want to use the clasps, tags, or anywhere near any soldering joints. Make sure your sample is enough to get a good reaction. The right amount of sample needed will be obvious to you once you do a few tests. Once the rub samples are on the slate, you take the test solution bottles and apply a drop to the rubs. If the rubs dissolve, it does not meet that purity test. If the rub stays intact under the test solution, it passes for that purity. So here are some examples of me conducting the touchstone test on gold. First, you must realize that this type of testing involves the use of nitric and muriatic acids and precautions should be taken to protect any exposed skin and your eyes. Always follow the manufacturer's directions for the proper care, storage, and handling of acids. Having a solution of baking soda and water nearby as a neutralizer may also be a good idea. The first piece I'll test is a single earring that has no hallmark on it. So I really don't have any idea of its purity or even if it's gold at all. But as I look closely at this piece, I notice the quality of its construction, the color and weight seems accurate, and a very close examination did not reveal any pitting, color changes, or rubs that revealed any underlying base material. This is my first time testing this piece, so we'll be seeing the results together. I chose the end of the earring where the pin goes into as the place to take my rub sample. Notice that I created a generous sample, but only a few molecules are required to get an accurate reading. I wanted you guys to be able to clearly see the results on camera. Based on the quality of the piece and the color, I have chosen to begin with the 14 karat testing solution. I have a feeling it will fall into this purity. 
All it takes is a small drop and to wait about 10 to 20 seconds for the reaction to take place. As you can clearly see, the 14 karat solution has not dissolved the sample, meaning that this is indeed gold and at least of 14 karat purity. Now I wipe the area clean and place another rub sample to see if it will pass the 18 karat purity test. There are different techniques for applying a rub sample. You can make one long rub and do multiple tests on a single rub or do individual rub tests. It's really up to you. Because this piece didn't have any purity marks on it, I wanted to validate that it was even gold. Here is the result of the 18 karat test, and as you can see the gold was clearly dissolved by this solution, confirming that this piece is made from 14 karat gold. Next I will test this pair of earrings. Again, these didn't have any hallmarks of any kind, but they look and they feel like they might be gold, so let's check them out. I've chosen to begin with the 14 karat test solution as most common quality jewelry is made with 14 karat gold. This time the results were quite different. The 14 karat solution definitely removed the rub sample, so this is not 14 karat gold. Now I want to test for 10 karat. And as you can see, it quickly dissolved the rub, meaning this isn't even gold at all. If you're still not sure, the next step is to take a tiny metal file and actually groove into the surface of the item, making sure that it's deep enough to penetrate any possible plating of a precious metal on the surface. Then place a drop of the testing solution directly on the freshly made notch that you just created. In this case we have a bubbling reaction that turns green. This indicates a presence of copper. Now I will test this hallmarked 14 karat gold Italian men's bracelet. Even though the hallmark is not a guarantee of purity, the quality craftsmanship of this piece lends me to believe it is authentic. Let's test it together for the first time and see. I'm choosing a location near the clasp and on the edge to take the rub sample from. Again, you don't need to remove this much, but I really wanted you guys to clearly see the test results. I'm starting with the 10K solution.
and as you can see, it has no effect, meaning that we have a gold item here. Now I'll test it for 14 karat purity. Just a small drop is all that's needed. And this bracelet has passed the 14 karat test. Now we'll try the 22 karat solution. Give it 10 to 20 seconds. And here we can see that the 22 karat solution has dissolved the rub sample. So there we have it. This bracelet is 14 karat gold. Let's try a ring. I'm not sure if you can see it, but on the inside surface of the ring is an etched hallmark with the purity mark of 14K. With custom made jewelry like this, etchings are easy to fake, so I want to check this out to make sure that it's legit. This time I'll make one long rub mark and do multiple tests on the same rub, making sure not to mix the solutions. The results are that it passed the 10 and 14K but dissolved in the 18K solution, so this ring is 14 carats. On this ring the hallmark says 585, and this is a typical type of purity hallmark from Asian and European made pieces. 0.585 is the same as 14 carats, so let's test this ring and see what we get. It clearly passes the 10 and 14 karat solutions and fails the 18 karat solution. So once again, the purity marking was accurate and we have 14 karat gold here. So here's a ring that appears to have an incomplete purity hallmark. Believe it or not, this is reasonably common and happens when a ring is resized by a jeweler. Either the hallmark was polished off, or in this case, I believe this ring was cut and drastically resized, where part of the hallmark was actually removed. Either way, when you encounter a piece that has been obviously worked on, it's a good idea to touchstone check the piece. You never know what kind of modifications were made to this piece. 
Based on what I can see, I would anticipate for this piece to be of 10K purity. So let's find out. I'll test all three purity solutions. What the results tell me is that this piece passes the 14 karat test. But because I know that this ring was worked on and I believe was cut to resize, I want to make sure that I get a sample rub from a part of the ring that I know wasn't worked on. This could be a 10 karat ring that was repaired with 14 karat gold. These situations often happen as 14 karat gold is so much easier to mold and form rather than the much harder 10 karat. So we test it again. and the results were consistent with the first test. So what we have here is a gold ring with a purity somewhere between 10 and 14 carats. There are more ways to increase your stack of precious metals other than coins, rounds, and bars. You just have to take a little more precaution to protect yourself against counterfeits. The touchstone test is probably the most practical and affordable method of ensuring your precious metals are authentic. With the touchstone testing method, I feel very confident to purchase items made of precious metals and knowing that I'm getting what I pay for. Be sure to tune into part two of this series where we will discuss the testing and verifying of the purity of silver bullion. Was this information of any use to you? Do you stack precious metals other than coins, rounds, and bars? Let me know in the comment section below. A big thank you to all who support this channel, especially to those who take the time to watch the entire video, comment, share, like, and subscribe. If you're not yet a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Then be sure to select the notification bell to be notified as soon as I post up new content. Be sure to check out the ST66 Discord channel and the ST66 Weekly Live Bullion Auction.